good morning. We'll call this work session to order, and I hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful and fabulous weekend. I would like to start first of all with uh, public comment, and uh, we have two uh, citizens who have signed up this morning, Mr. Larry Pierce and Professor Janaski. Uh, we will all come forth, please uh, just keep in mind we have three minutes to speak. I ask that civility is, uh, remains the top of focus of, of the conversation. And um, Mr. Pierce, if you could come forward, forward and give us your uh, address and your topic this morning is coming back. So. Yeah. Churches have coming back, don't they? So, uh, oh, excuse me, Larry Pierce, 4120. Grand Saint Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, I, I really meant what I said a few weeks ago, uh, but but I'm going to tell you what happened. And it happened about happened last week at Martin's. I'm sitting over there with about 10 or 15 people, and this guy about 40 years old, clean cut, very muscular, come over to me, and he said. He points his finger. He says, are you Larry Pierce? Now, when somebody does that, you're not too sure if you should say yes or no. Because I didn't know if it was some adversary or I, I know it wasn't somebody's husband because I'm not involved in stuff like that. <coughs> wow. So I said, yes, I am. And he held his hand out. He said, let me shake your hand. He said, I can't wait for you to come on and say what you got to say about what's going on. And I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I watch it every time. I said, well, tell me what you really think. He said, no, I'm serious. So with that thought in mind, and I told him, and he came over to me because what I said, <coughs> he said, you're not going to do that. I said, uh, well, he said, you got to go back. And that happened with two people other than him. Didn't know him. I know that doesn't mean much. Three people doesn't mean much. And that's all I got to say for that. The, uh, <clears throat> wasn't going to talk about her, and I'm not going to, but I will say the rally didn't quite turn out with two ministers from Clayton County. Because I sat on the far corner of the parking lot over there to make sure what I saw was for real so I wouldn't get it second hand. And there was about 17 people there for y'all to know. <clears throat> Nobody here I recognize except Mr. John Tomoski. He drove up and he was there. But other than that, I didn't recognize anybody uh, in particular. So uh, that lasted for, I don't know, 20, 15 minutes. I left. But I'll tell you something real funny, and this is going to end it. <clears throat> About 2 o'clock this morning, a major crash. I'm laying down, and I don't eat regular. I got up about midnight to eat the hot and sour soup that I had in the microwave. So I laid back down watching a crime program, and boom! I mean, like, I thought the air conditioner <coughs> fell on the floor that I just put in from an old one in the window. Well, I got up, and I got my little handgun. It's not a real handgun. It's 25 caliber. And I, I looked around, and I don't see nothing made a boom. <laughs> Trust me, I do stack stuff up. And on the six-foot shells that you put together that you get from Kmart, the whole thing came over like this and fell on the floor. And all the books and everything fell over. And I had to sit there and laugh because it startled me. And I couldn't imagine what it was because it wasn't only that high off the side of the bed. So if that ever happens to y'all, just be startled for a moment. But I had to share some laughter with you. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, okay. Mr. Pierce. <laughs> Professor Tomaski, please, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> and your subject matter is Vax on Tax. Uh, good morning to all. John Tomaski, 6th Athens to the Park of Douglasville. Uh, <clears throat> well, first, uh, when uh, one speaks about taxes, it is uh, somewhat ambiguous because there is a distinction between the tax rate, the tax revenue that that rate generates, and the taxes that are actually collected. 
And when the press or politicians or the public, <coughs> public in general, speak about uh, these matters, they usually just refer to taxes, so the discussion can become rather ambiguous and vague. Uh, and uh, for uh, some, you know, that might be uh, part of the reason that they do speak in such an unspecified way. Uh, now, uh, presently, we have a situation where uh, residential property assessments have gone up substantially, and uh, <coughs> I was speaking with uh, one uh, person uh, who mm -hmm. has never spoken at this forum, who routinely would uh, appeal increases on their properties, always successfully, but not this time. And there's also uh, been some r reports published about millage rates going up by both the Board of Education and uh, this board. Now, uh, more than a year ago, there was a presentation here <coughs> by a person who um, is a financial counselor, does a pretty good job, uh, basically for a lay person. I was present at that uh, session, uh, as was our chair and an, another director. And I was uh, silent through all of it. I was quite impressed by how good a presentation the lady had made. At the end, I volunteered the remark that uh, she had not mentioned uh, foreign exchange rates. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking <coughs> about values, well, measured by according to what? And I explained that money has a definition. To be money, a currency has to be a unit of account, which the US dollar is. And it has to be a medium of exchange, which it is. And it also has to be a store of value, which it is not. It has depreciated greatly against the euro. So when, during the last budget cycle, it was mentioned that the digest had returned to its 2007 value that is only measuring by the rubber yardstick that is the U.S. dollar, which is no longer money. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kamasi. We appreciate your uh, coming in. We certainly would take this matter under advisement. Board of Commissioners, uh, I'm just going to move this um, my <coughs> panel around just a little bit so we can move quickly. We have a presentation <coughs> coming next uh, with, uh, by Mr. Terry Gable for the SWASA date. But uh, quickly, I would just like to say we have the approval of the minutes tomorrow. Please, I ask that you please take a look at those minutes, and we will approve accordingly uh, tomorrow. We have a public hearing tomorrow, um, and that public hearing will be led by uh, our finance director, Jennifer Holman, on the 2019 military rate public hearing. So uh, she'll just uh, leave that for us and kick it off, and then we'll go from there. Uh, <coughs> County Administrator, do you have anything? Um, yes, ma'am. I have an amended memorandum of understanding with the development authority um, and essentially what this is is pass through or passing funds through the development authority for Collins tourism department um, our existing memorandum of agreement of was for actual her actual budget this one is for the four hundred sixty nine thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars and ninety four cents that the board approved I think at the last meeting and these are funds left over from uh, 17 and 18 on the hotel motel tax. Mm -hmm. And we've been directed by <coughs> DC to spend those funds. Yes. <coughs> okay. Any questions from the board on that one? Commissioner uh, Guido? Yes, and I'm going to direct it to Mark. Mm -hmm. you mind? Yes. Uh, Mark, have we ever looked into the fact whether or not we can use tourism <coughs> money from the hotel motel tax? <coughs> to update 
our website because um, that that's the first place a tourist looks at is the website when they're going to visit an area. And could we not use that those funds instead of just giving it to the chamber? We'll have to check on it and see. Okay. Um, I know it has to be used for tourism. Yes. But tourism to me falls under a website. Yep. No, our website falls under answer. tourism. We, we have a tourism website. <coughs> no, I'm no. talking about our website. Oh, no, the no, county no. website. No, ma'am. You can't. You can't use it. <coughs> you sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I yield back. Okay. All right. Let's go to her. I'm sorry. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll check it out. So, so to, but, but to that point, um, I think we've got an initiative going on to upgrade our website. We recognize our website, uh, county website, is, is antiquated. We, we need to move forward to 2.0. And so I'm looking forward to the, uh, what that committee comes out uh, regarding that. But pivoting to um, what will be the uses of this, this funds that are being transferred? Can we get a framework for that? <coughs> you don't have to go into an action plan, but just... <coughs> Yes, well, it was on the, the agenda a couple of weeks ago, the full list yep. with the amounts. But it's uh, GACVB dues, and Colin, you might want to step to the yeah, podium to that. say what some of these acronyms are. So the uh, GACVB Winter Conference, Governor's Tourism Conference, AMTA dues, Georgia State Parks Guide, State Travel Guide, um, ACVB Tour Manual, ACVB Atlanta Now Magazine, Atlanta Visitors Map, uh, CVB Partnership, Atlanta Outdoor Expo, uh, Advertising, Public Relations. Um, we've already pulled out the money for the gateway sign, right, Jennifer? Did we pull that out of this or did it still come out of this? It was pulled out. It was pulled out. Money was pulled. It was part of this 469. No. It wasn't part it's of it. It's already out. <coughs> it was in addition to the 469 for the gateway sign. Okay. So a lot of and that's marketing. coming up later on in the agenda. It's, our, it's my advertising and marketing budget. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. And it was the, um, I gave y'all the complete proposal. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was the last it was, meeting. It was the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that had all the detailed of everything we were going to spend. Mm -hmm. And it was approved. No, no, no problem. We, we just have to reconcile when things come before us to time together, make sure things get shift or move. So we, mm -hmm. uh, my and, intent um, is to so get clarity. I'd be happy to um, tell you about any of those acronyms if you want to know. Mm -hmm. right. I'll resend the list that was approved at either the prior meeting or the one before. Mm -hmm. We'll send that to you so you can. Last yeah. time was the plan, and now we're approving the movement of the money. Is that yes, sir? All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have Commissioner Parkin. Okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> I have one yes, question for you. One question. Mm -hmm. Director Cash. Yes, ma'am. Sir, can you tell me about professional services and supplies? What What does that entail? Professional Professional services is where we'll um, we'll do research and um, mostly mostly research. Um, help with our marketing plan. Um, we may have someone come in to facilitate a program of work. And then supplies is just our office, <coughs> our <coughs> office supplies, our, our general operating expenses. But basically everything in uh, the tourism department is paid for out of this portion of the hotel motel tax. Yeah. So it's just our operating. Okay. So do you all <coughs> have a list of vendors that you use for professional services and supplies or will you still be utilizing the counties? Um, I get I get bids on um, professional services. I haven't done it yet, but it may be like um, a research study that, for example, there may be a research study done um, through the Development Authority in conjunction with the uh, the Riverwalk plans, and that has a tourism slant to it. So we may participate in that. Um, something so it's not always something that I'm contracting directly but because the money throws flows through the development authority we don't necessarily use the same vendors um, that the county does and that was the purpose of 
running this through the development authority because oftentimes what the tourism uh, department needs to do, the county um, procedures were prohibiting us from being able to do that, and that's part of the reason that we flow it through the development authority. Does that make sense? I think so. So you're okay. saying in general you needed things to be done a little quicker? Yes, ma'am. For example, if I need to run an ad in Southern Living, mm -hmm. Southern Living is not going to fill out that vendor form um, they need you know and I need to have it turned around and things like that mm -hmm. so um, and part of the DCA um, compliance is that the activities of your tourism entity can't be hindered by okay. government um, restrictions okay. All right. Tell us one question. anything else okay. okay thank you all right thank you uh, the cash all right, and um, Board of Commissioners, I um, encourage you to look at your expenses for tomorrow and be prepared to approve accordingly. Now I'm ready for you, Mr. Gable. You can come forth. Board of Commissioners, you have your, your notebooks that, um, are, that have been uh, yes. um, put together for us today so you can follow this presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Gable. you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Board. My name is Terry Gable, and I'm with Moore and Altabelli, and I'll be giving the August uh, update for the SPLOS program. <clears throat> uh, so I'll be reporting on the June revenues that came in and then work through, uh, through July of 2019. Um, so we're, we're approaching, we're showing about $26 million here on the slide. Um, we, had a, we had a good month in July as far as uh, invoicing out expenses. Uh, so we're really approaching about $30 million uh, total uh, with everything. Some of the stuff's still in the pipeline, but we're right at $30 million. Um, with our total revenues, I mean total money spent uh, to date, um, <clears throat> comparing that with you know with the uh, uh, with the with the bond that was, you can look at the percentage difference between what's spent and what the, uh, the bond was that we the county got. Um, and if you break it out by program, it right at 14 million dollars and uh, the fire and EMS. Eight million dollars in transportation, and then right at two million dollars in parks to date. Just follow my own slides. Um, so, the uh, looking at the graph <coughs> for the uh, for the revenues, we're still staying just slightly above the uh, the projection line, which is where we need to be. We we're about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars over. Uh, would love for it to be higher, but we'll take that. Uh, it's still helping us to maintain uh, um, numbers in the black, uh, and I'll show you some hard numbers here. Work so kind of where we're at uh, for the total uh, month and for the total program. So Jim was about 2.1 million, um, and that's compared to the projections uh, that we used for the for third year, a little over two million. Um, the totals for year three. First three months was 6.7 million, and the projection overall uh, overage for year three is a little over 600 thousand dollars. And you'll see in just a second that's that's just stepping us out overall with the with a total of the three years. Um, there's our total collections uh, for the SPLOS program: 56.1 million. Uh, compare that to the original projections that we've established early on, where that was 54.2 million. And we're holding on about a about a 1.8 million dollar overage for the for the first three years, and again we're about three months into the third year. So we're looking looking good, and hopefully those will continue through the summer. And as we move into the to the holidays, uh, we'll start seeing an uptick in it. As far as our bond obligation, we'll pay back <coughs> October 1st. It'll be our first payment as we've done in the past, uh, around 959 thousand dollars. <coughs> And they will make a larger payment in April. Uh, those time frames have not changed. Okay, so we'll move into uh, no questions on revenues. We'll move into um, some project updates. Still pretty much the same with project complete uh, that are complete for fire. Uh, and for the countywide digital radio system. Chief, you can help me if, uh, if I miss something, but I think the main thing that we were all looking for was to get SHPO's approval on the agreement. Uh, that allow uh, Motorola to move the, the agreement to FCC 
Uh, and so we're, we're uh, well, the chief had told me that we've actually already ordered materials for that site. Uh, so Motorola's moving forward with it. And that'll, that'll kick off that last site location in Tower. And it'll move fairly quickly. <coughs> The, the SHPO was approved last week, uh, and so it's already at the FCC, so we should be getting our final paperwork for that. And uh, the tower still has been ordered, and the rebar for the foundation has already been ordered. So, Good news. So that's, that's great news. They sat on as long as they could, too, didn't they? Uh, well, actually, they, they came in about five days early, so. Ah, that's good. We'll take that. We'll, we'll take what we need. Yeah. Um, so with that, and that's the main, obviously the main thing with the, with the radio system right now is get that site completed, and then we can move into um, uh, Motorola can finish everything up and move into uh, through the remainder of the year through the testing for the, uh, for the radio system. Just a couple quick updates on the amulets. Uh, the we expect delivery on on the we uh, cheaper than purchase one amulet this year. We expect delivery on that in October. And then our new fire truck um, had, has already went through the process on the on the vendor selection. It's been approved today. It's on the agenda today, and uh, obviously that will get that kicked off and, and start fabrication for that <coughs> fire truck. <coughs> uh, station three, uh, we're still trying to wrap up some warranty issues with a few things that with the uh, Titus construction. Everything's moving along well. Uh, Scott and I met out there last week with them. Uh, I think we're, we've gotten uh, them moving forward with it, and hopefully they'll wrap that up in the next couple of weeks. And we'll be able, we'll be this may be the last time we um, we report on this. That's the main reason I've got it in here now. To, just until we can close out the project, and get everything to the chief's satisfaction. Staff vehicles. Uh, it was proposed to, to purchase three vehicles this year. Right now, we've taken delivery of one of the expeditions, and we're still, uh, the, the second one is in, still being worked on. We're trying to get the budget set for that one, and then Chief them can make a determination if they have money in the budget to go for the third vehicle. Uh, but they want to get this one fully equipped, and we'll, we'll make a decision on the third vehicle if there's money in the budget to purchase it. Uh, Station 9 uh, is, we're, I'm working with the chief now, we're starting the process of developing the, the RFP for it. Um, we'll, we'll get that kind of uh, tuned in and we'll be putting the project out uh, for design. This will be just for design right now. Uh, we'll get that on the street over the next couple of months and, and start and take some bids in on a, a design firm for the fire station 9. All right, we'll move into, um, into transportation. Completed projects under Gail's office. So the, <clears throat> talk just a minute about the resurfacing program. Um, C.W. Matthews is um, in Cali, is in uh, Douglas now and uh, they're working away. Uh, they are really just getting getting started. Uh, you know, they came in and did Lee Road, um, and they started back about two weeks ago. So we're about, they, they're about five roads into it now, but got a little ways to go. I think there was a total of 24 miles of, of resurfacing. Uh, it's a fairly large contract, so they'll, they'll be here. I think they promised Miguel they'll, uh, they'll stay until they get it done and possibly bring a second crew in. So that was good news um, as we try to wrap up this year's Resurfacing. Payment evaluations are is complete. We're uh, fine tuning the the, uh, the software program. We met with Miguel last week. Um, needed a few more um, some more input from him. But really, at this point, it's just a matter of, uh, of kind of tying everything down in the software program. Everything is being checked. Miguel had a, a suggestion on a couple things. We're going to go back and. and add a, a few things to what we've already entered, which shouldn't take us that long. Um, right now, the target is to, uh, September 1st, is to uh, get the program over to Miguel and get to go through a short training class with him and his staff, and uh, that'll wrap that up. Um, we've got, we've already given Miguel some spreadsheets, and he'll be getting to the board 
and try to present that uh, over the next couple weeks. Uh, update on Stuart Mill Road. Um, Jacobs right now is, is uh, finishing up the final design plans for it. He has they have submitted revised right of way plans to Miguel. So technically, we're we're in the right of way phase of this project. We're looking at four or five months um, for a right of way to be uh, purchased on it. Miguel and right now starting title searches and appraisals. Um, we're working through uh, utilities. So. The project's moving, and we're, we've got it at a good point. I think Jacobs, Jacobs and him have done a good job trying to wrap the project up and tie everything back together. Um, and they'll be submitting final plans um, probably sometime in September, and that'll work right along with uh, Miguel's uh, right-of-way office to, to close out, to start closing out on the parcels. Bright Star Road at John West. Again, it's in the right-of-way phase. Uh, we got two, Miguel has two parcels left to close on. Um, and we're working with those now, and as soon as those get closed out, this project will be ready to put out for bid two. <coughs> Plans are ready to go, and utilities are ready. Sweetwater Church bids. Uh, this project has been advertised. The bids are due August the 23rd. Um, so we'll, once we get those in, they'll be reviewed and, and sent to the board for, for their review and approval. So we're getting, uh, that, that looks like that'll be the first splice intersection that we'll get out um, on the street. Uh, Chapel Hill Road's in full design phase. Uh, we're moving through that. Expect preliminary plans sometime in the first of November. Um, and then right away plans will follow that uh, about four or five weeks after uh, the plans are reviewed and any comments are given back to SEI. So if the project's moving along again, I'll just remind the board that uh, we're buying right away for uh, the future footprint on this project. It's added some parcels to it and it's going to take, it'll take several months to get, uh, for Miguel staff to get, uh, get the, the right away purchase with this project. But we're, We've got, uh, we're moving forward with it and should hopefully have them to them by the end of the year. Uh, Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard, the right turn lane there. I think that's hinging right now on, on getting a task order for the on call consultant. That one of the first projects that are on their list um, to, to design first. And as soon as that all that's worked out, uh, we'll start the design process on, on the right turn lane there. Post Road Bridge, uh, no change in the construction schedule on it. Miguel's uh, is working on a, three parcels that uh, I think one's already been acquired that we're trying to close out for that project. Nothing big there, but it was some, um, some a few three little right away impacts that he had to he had to address. But once that's done, hopefully we'll be set to go for the construction and um, starting in the first of 2020. Our sidewalk projects, we got several of these, pro you know, all these projects are, um, as we've been reporting on, are moving closer and closer to construction. And I know the <coughs> sidewalk projects, we've been, um, everybody's eager to get these out. Um, so the, the first two that we, Lithia Springs and then Chestnut Log, both of these had a couple right away uh, impacts. Fortunately, on uh, Lithia Springs, it was in front of the schools so and should speed that up. But no challenges I don't, at this point that we see with, with the right-of-way. But it is going to be a matter of Miguel's office working through those and getting those closed. And then we'll, I'm still hoping we can get these projects finished up as far as right-of-way and design and have them let by the end of the year. The, uh, the sidewalk at the high school took a little different twist. We didn't have to get the right-of-way. Uh, we had the right-of-way out there to put that sidewalk in, but we did have to get the permit from GDOT. And SEI is working with them currently to get to, to get that closed out and approved. Whitestone uh, culvert is um, very close. If I understand, Miguel, of issued a notice to proceed to contract. Right? Miguel, did we get the? We haven't done that yet, but we're getting close. Getting close. As far as the um, the, the additional funds for the, the redesign on the footing, is that that's been approved, hasn't it? 
That's going to the committee. It needs to come before the board. Okay, so that does need still need to go through the committee. Okay. So a little bit, we got to get that obviously processed before we, before Miguel can move forward with a notice to proceed on. Uh, the street lights at various locations in the county. Uh, Mark's been working with the two utility companies, um, finalizing the project list with that so we can develop the scope. And then, of course, we've been working to get the, the uh, executed agreements with Greystone and, and Georgia Power. Highway 92 at Mount Vernon. Um, continue getting some good feedback from Miguel with GDOT on this project. It looks like it, we're moving closer and closer to a quick response project. Uh, hopefully this fall. I uh, don't see any real hiccups in it right now. Other than Miguel says materials is backed up. That may be one thing that may delay it. Uh, but GDOT is moving forward with it. Uh, it sounds like everything is set, and they're going to uh, get <coughs> bids on a quick response project um, and get a contract out, hopefully, by the end of the year. And we'll keep you updated as we move closer to that. Does any, any issues come up with it? Highway 92 at Mount Vernon signal, that'll be done by uh, the task order. It was a plan to, to, um, to do that project uh, with one of the on-call uh, consultants. And this is the GDOT supplemental l -MIG for uh, primarily for striping. And I think Miguel has everything set up, uh, the SPOS funds that we need for that. Uh, and the GDOT funds to move that project forward as we go into the into the fall. And our Lee Road widening project, uh, Michael Baker, his contract was recently approved, and they're moving forward with Miguel's office and and getting this getting the project back on track <coughs> as far as design and moving through that process. Uh, and I'm sure they'll, they'll be working through that through the rest of the year and into the first part of 2020. Maximum Road at uh, State Route 6, Thornton Road. This is another project that's very close to getting a notice to proceed issued. Miguel is working with GDOT to get uh, their contract with the county signed and get GDOT's approval to move forward with it as soon as that happens. Um, he's already taken bids on it. It'll be a matter of giving a contractor to go ahead. <coughs> Just a couple shots um, with uh, Miguel's equipment that came in. This is actually 2018. Uh, it just seemed to take a little bit longer this year to get uh, to get these particular pieces of equipment in, but um, Levon was kind enough to send these to us, and they were, they are. Miguel said they look real good there, but now obviously now it didn't take them long to get them out on the street and put them to work. But if you look at equipment, I'm sure it'll be a big benefit to the to the maintenance on this. Okay. So with uh, with that, I'll close out transportation. And we'll move. Um, please stop me if you have any questions. We'll quickly go through Gary's stuff. Fleeted projects. The boundary waters, I kept this one in here, and also the that's the concession building, and also the, the soccer field lights. Um, we paid the retainage on both these projects, and they'll go into the uh, project complete list uh, next month. Both of them turned out good contractors, and both of them turned out very nice. Deer Lake Park, we are, um, I think we've gotten over some, just a couple little hiccups with WSA and the health department. Uh, we just need them to do a final sign off on the plans, and I expect that over the next week, a week and a half, and we'll get this project out for the bid. Um, and then we'll be able to set back, once we get the hard numbers in, we'll be able to set back and look at the overall budget. Um, and the Lord can be able to have an opportunity to review it and look at uh, uh, the budget versus uh, Bill Art and Fair Play. And then we'll do what the tennis courts came in at. And we'll move forward from there. The, the next two projects are our big projects, the multi-purpose rec center and uh, the senior center, the the plans are ready. This this is ready to go to bid. Uh, Bill has the uh, the bid documents. And I think at this point we're set to. Uh, Bill's trying to get them on the 
in front of the and Gary get them in front of the <coughs> committees, uh, prior committees for review. Yes. Uh, once they once they're reviewed and, and we're given the, the go ahead, uh, we're ready. We'll have these out on the street. Uh, uh, I'm sure by the end of September for sure. <coughs> So these are the two projects there. We're, we're kind of holding right now. If you remember, they were bid out. Uh, we have, um, we've got the bids in and it's, we want to look at the hard numbers on Derelict since it was higher on the priority list, uh, just to make sure we got the budget a little closer where we, we, we have projected uh, the numbers to come in at. Uh, once we get that bid in, we'll, we'll provide it to the board and we'll make some final decisions on, on these two session building but they're ready to go the plans are plans have been completed and like we had advertised it and, and we've got the bids in and then the fair play park lights that project's substantially complete uh, we're just working kind of like with the fire station and working with the contractor on a few uh, little punch list items and we've got to do the final light test but they're fully operational. Um, I'm hoping by now, uh, all of the, Gary, the staff at Gary's appointed to be able to control the lights. Everything's done now by, by phone. It's pretty cool. And we, we had a little hiccups in getting that done, but I think we've got it now. Uh, we'll be wrapping that project up here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then the final um, for Gary's and miscellaneous equipment purchases, uh, we've at this point, I think three vehicles, and we have a small amount of money left over for gear to get some miscellaneous uh, accessories with it. So, and with uh, with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. I feel like we okay. thank you so much. Do that ready. Uh, board commissioners, do we have any questions? Uh, commissioner. <coughs> Uh, Terry, we met just a few minutes before our, this meeting. <laughs> uh, we were talking about Highway 5, the right turn lane, northbound right turn lane. And um, you said that uh, no, Commissioner McCarthy stated that it had been approved in committee, I guess, to go ahead and, and choose the uh, designer for that. It's approved through the purchasing committee, but it has to go through the transportation committee. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it hadn't been approved yet to go to proceed. No, it hadn't been recommended to the board yet. Not okay. Fully. okay. Do we have a timeline on that? We have a transportation committee meeting tomorrow at two o'clock. So if it could possibly be on the next BOC agenda. Okay. Not tomorrow's. Not tomorrow's. But tomorrow's. Okay. All right. Possible. Uh, and so we, we're just going to pick from a, a small pool or uh, bid it out to um, two or three of them. Is that right? When we do proceed? Uh, that, that depends on how many of the uh, contracts, the on call contracts, are approved. Uh, it is on the agenda for the transportation committee meeting uh, tomorrow, and if if those are all forwarded on to the board and they're all approved, then uh, essentially we would go back to one of the ones that are qualified to do intersection design. There's, I believe, there's three of those, and we would negotiate with the, one of them, and if we cannot agree on a contract fee then we would terminate negotiations with the one and move to the second. But so the process the process is once they're qualified, then we approach one of them <coughs> with a scope of work and get a proposal back and then we negotiate a price. Oh, so we don't just bid it out to, to no, no. Okay. Um so after we get the design, then we go to the right-of-way acquisition, Correct. and then we uh, go to uh, bidding out the project. Correct. Do you have any kind of timeline, <coughs> as timeline? I'm sorry, <laughs> as to uh, this turn lane uh, 
when it might go out to bed? I would have to um, make a lot of assumptions mm -hmm. as to how the process would proceed. It is one of the simpler type of uh, designs uh, for... A lot of utilities. Uh, yeah, but the utilities are, are a consideration and the environmental is also a concern. Hopefully there are no mm -hmm. environmental issues when we... We have to do at least a, a first phase, a phase one um, <coughs> analysis. And uh, hopefully there would, we won't have to go beyond that. But uh, I would say at least a year before we could even envision it going out to bid, uh, probably by the end of next year might be the earliest uh, realistic time. And when would be the, uh, when does the memorandum of understanding <coughs> with the city who has agreed to pay half of it, when does that run out? To 2021? 2021. So that's what you're so saying. Yes. Or 2022. Oh, 2022. Oh, 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was thinking 2021 too, so it kind of scared me because I knew we couldn't build it. We couldn't uh, construct that intersection in that length of time. We'll so confirm the date in about two seconds. You gotta confirm it. I yes. Well, uh, and I, we talked about this in July our meeting. July first, twenty twenty-two. Okay. We uh, <coughs> talked about this in the meeting that it doesn't just affect District Four; it it, it affects uh, <coughs> District Three too because she's on the other side of Highway Five. I'm on this side mostly, uh, but uh, it affects also people going to the mall and. Uh, I hear this often, especially in the southern end of the, the county, that because of the traffic, they go to Carroll County. So we, I think it's uh, imperative that we proceed with this as soon as possible because it does affect our sales tax collection. Understood. All right. Thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much. A couple, a couple things. Um, we're, we're what we have to turn basically um, in this fall. What we want, almost three years solid. Yes. Yeah, three years solid, and we, we came up with. Um, I'm going to give context. We came up with an original schedule, scope, and relative budget. Um, at the beginning of this project. Uh, this was based on the citizens, uh, it was contingent upon the citizens' uh, approval of a referendum. And without that, all, all bets are off. It was based on categories. We've now, we're into this. And so my question, this is more to our program manager, who, you know, we, you know the original SPOS, when I first came in, in 2009, we paid two points. Uh, for program management. We're paying four points on a dollar for this one. All right. Uh, that was a single spouse item. This is obviously a across the county. And so my question then becomes like, now that we've gotten into this, we had a baseline. And again, so Mark, I mean, you great job in coming up with this list of projects that have historically been aggregating, recognizing we didn't pay any attention to it in the times past. Right? We're just we're stuff sitting on the sideline. We now have a baseline. Have we, now that we've gotten into this, we've been able to scope, get real estimates, uh, put design work against this. Have we done any recalibration of the schedule based on cash flow? This is a straight program management question. Based on cash flow, based on scope, and schedule, triple constraints. Have you recast this, or do you anticipate on recast this based on today's knowledge? Yes, so the, you know, the project list that we've been working on, um, I think that we were tasked with that early on because we wanted to make sure we did need to get the list up to date as far as best numbers on construction. So we've done that. And I think we've got a good list uh, on where we think things are going to be coming in based on our current construction costs that we've seen. Uh, and we've been able to look at the overall budget in each program. We've established some um, risk lines on each one. And, uh, we're as good right now, I think, with that as we can get 
uh, in looking at the numbers that have already come in versus what we think they're going to be projected for. So as far as the list goes, I think we got a, we got a good handle on, the, on our budgets for each program and what we think we're going to be able to do within those budgets. Right. So we're going to push a little bit layer below this and, and direct our home to help. You, you, you know where we're going to go with it. When we talk about cash flow, right, we're paying a bond, right, and we've got these revenues come in, tax revenue to pay it back. Mm -hmm. We've always talked about years four and five, right? So I, I've got this, it's a simple, I'm looking at, I'm going through the schedule, I'm gonna have to blow this up, it's too small for me to look at, but it's real simple, your critical path. There's a critical path in schedule, there's a critical path in cash. And I just wanna know how aligned are there, what is the volatility, how many, it's all about rule. It, it's great to be tight, I don't like tight. Mm -hmm. like, that's like, I can't fit in there, right? So. Is there any room, and do we need to make room based on, that's real tight. Like we don't think you get what I'm saying. Like there, there needs yeah. to be, it's always plus or minus, right? It mean, there's a macro effect. You can't control, um, um, you know, the bigger picture, right? You, you can't control federal stuff. You, you just, you're not in that place. We're at the local level. So when that stuff trickles down to us and it impacts us, we can at least anticipate it, right? You, you can at least forecast it. So. When we're in these meetings and I'm listening to what you're not saying, not you personally, but I, I listen to what's not being said. And so my question is what I like, and I'll just close it with this, I, what I'd like to do is get, Madam Chair, it's your pleasure for them to re-forecast for all the Board of Commissioners, just recast it, just, you know, update, just to make sure, and even with that, being able to say, okay, plus or minus, because as we make decisions to amend, to update, um, there is effects. And staff should be there. And I'm, Miguel, you know, we'll just use you for example. If it's an intersection, I'm just using that because that's what it's talked about. But what does that mean? And it, it can't be relative because you got cash that's real. Staff can take their time with schedules. It's like, okay, y'all got cash that's burning. We got this big. We got this payment coming. Now, just we got to be very honest and accurate about. All right, now, so we're paying four points to you guys. You got to get the math right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairman Robinson, do you have a comment that you would like to add something to the discussion? <coughs> no, as far as follow up with uh, Mr. Robinson's question, so we're you know we we're monitoring that very closely, and the I guess the, the other side of that is is the project list and the budgets, and then the other side of that is is looking at the revenues. Uh, the first thing, the priority thing that we that we've done, and it was set up from the very beginning, is that the the, the bond paybacks uh, come off the top, and, and, that, and the number we're looking at to balance the program uh, is is the balance once the revenues, the bonds paid, with the outgoing costs we've had each year as far as projects and then the revenues coming in. So it's in the fourth year to reemphasize that again, and we we've, we've kind of softly talked about it as we've gotten to this point is that this year is the highest bond payment we'll make. Uh, and that's obviously, like I said, that's coming directly off the revenues. That we're paying that directly off the top uh, with the revenue. So moving into year four will be the smallest PAYGO money we'll, we'll have. Um, and, then, and then we're also looking at, we're keeping up with the cost that we're currently at. So next year, could, as far as cash flow, it, it'll be, that's what we've got to monitor real close. Uh, make sure we're meeting we're looking at with the staff and everybody knows what we 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 got coming up particularly next year as we move into five and everything just kind of moves out um the last three years uh five six and seven the seventh year of it is when it kind of drops off then it'll start picking back up of course the bond be paid off and you're back working with with full revenue so we're, we're monitoring that as close as we are the the actual project list Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so, did they get what we, were, what we asked for? Did you commit to? Yes. We'll get you that there. Okay. Yes. We'll do that. Okay. I'll we'll get you that there. Okay. okay. Yeah, you Commissioner Mitchell, I believe you raise your hand. Yes. Just a couple. Um, thanks for explaining that whole makeup because I know <gasps> Kelly and I kind of we had a real deeper discussion, a deeper dive. But okay. With that being said, um, the radio system. Uh, are we still on target to uh, test and are we still under budget? Kind of where are we uh, with that? I know we just got the, the final uh, tower approved. 
Right. So as far as the budget goes, Chief, you step up. Uh, the budget goes, we're still under budget. <coughs> um, we can, uh, we're tracking it very close because there's been some credits, there's been some additional expenses, but mm -hmm. I think it's all kind of worked out and we're still, we're still under budget. Um, as far as the, the testing phase, you want to? The, they're, giving, they're still giving us a November, early December go live date. Okay. Uh, but our contract states that for the final testing, there has to be foliage on the trees. So we got to have leaves on the trees to do the final testing. Yeah. Uh, so that may be right. put off until springtime. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then, and, and what that final testing uh, basically does is it makes sure that the 95% uh, coverage rate that they assure us mm -hmm. is we will get that with leaves on the trees uh, in buildings. So we may be already in operation with it. Yes, we, we should be in operation uh -huh. by the end of the year for sure. Got it. But, uh, but, but the final testing, right, right. And, and there will be there will be testing done, you know, before we go live, right. of course. Mm -hmm. uh, what is but, that window? What is it? What is it? Uh, November, oh, late November, early November. December. Got it. Got it. Uh, that they still feel comfortable uh, because of this the the the, uh, the lag time we had for this last hour. They mm -hmm. still feel comfortable though that we'll be able to, to meet that deadline. Got it. And how do you feel about the whole makeup where we are? Uh, we're we're super excited about it. Uh, we actually had uh, the mock alert people in last week mm -hmm. uh, to do the some of the testing in the fire station stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and that went pretty well. Uh, they found some bugs, uh, and they're fixing those now. So, you know that that's what it's a it's a process, mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, uh, we're excited. Uh, all the radios have been ordered, mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, they're coming okay. in, and so we're. And budget-wise, you saying we're still under budget, or are we kind of having to spend those additional? The, the, the original budget, sixteen yes. points. Right. Mm -hmm. We're under that. Mm -hmm. About the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, I don't know exact, but I mean just our original our original <coughs> budget amount was sixteen five. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. actual budget was fifteen fifteen six. Something like that. Uh, and in the meantime, we've had uh, credits given back to us okay, okay. Uh, for, for different things that have been changed in the system. Uh, so we're uh, still and under budget. Okay, all right, okay, okay, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Um, the sidewalk projects. Um, I know we've been having this long, ongoing conversation, though, so. And you mentioned that we've got to um, get some right away and some design mm -hmm. and so on. Talk about um, now how far out where we are, so so we can talk with you. You know, this project's been, you know, yeah, and we are it's going into the fall. So the the, the plans are ready. The, the plans are ready. Um, it's just at this point, it's it's a matter of acquiring these three or four parcels on Lithia Springs and uh, Chestnut for it. Once once Gail's office has finished that. We're ready to go to construction, and I'm not. Miguel, do you have a feel for it at this point, as far as the length of time on? It, it's at least going to be a few months, um, but I'll have some additional discussion with the board on that later. Okay. So, it's meaning though, Miguel, help me. I'm going to understand what you mean later on. When we later on today. Um, oh. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Also, so you're gonna get, go back to the committee to kind of have a discussion there, or are you just gonna? Yeah. Hmm? We'll have a discussion. Oh, oh, executive session. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right. So on that note, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that timetable is not being discussed in executive session. That is acquisition real estate time. Understood. So it's Understood. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I didn't quite get that decoding, but I, I'm there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody's talking in you know, a foreign language. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, last but not least, <laughs> the Senior Citizen Center and the Boundary Waters. Uh, please hit that once more about it. Coming back to uh, the Parks and Rec Committee. 
and we should be ready to kind of move on that project and, and mm -hmm. so these so the what would be presented to the committees is, is just the bid documents right um, and as soon as that I don't know the exact timetable on it if Bill if you want to speak to that but as soon as the, the committees have reviewed it and approved it um, the architects are ready we're ready they're biting at the bits now we just need the, the bid dates uh, so they can put them on the plans mm -hmm. and we're, we're ready to go to out the bid for construction once the board's satisfied with, with our bid documents. Bill, any, anything you want to add to that? The, uh, our next uh, purchasing oversight committee meeting is September the uh, 3rd. Third. And so we'll look at the plans then. And then the park and rec, the met, next parks and rec committee meeting is first Tuesday of September. First Tuesday in September. So we'll get that done. Would it be the coordinated, like timing wise, so it won't throw us off a whole other month or two? Um, what? What date? Yeah, what date? Sure. Uh, the first Tuesday. Yeah, because you just said in <coughs> September. You yeah, guys. the third. It's on the same day. So, what time? Uh, Eight thirty. Oh, yeah. So uh, we can, but look at them at the, at the similar time. We don't. We can go ahead and have both committees look at them at the same time. Hours is first, and then right after hours is. Right. So it's kind of in reverse. So because we don't need them prior to that to even move forward. See, so you guys got to look at them first. Well, well we, can do, we can do, we can do a special call. Time. We can do it. You yeah. can look at them first, and then we'll look at them. Okay. Parks and Rec can look at them, and then purchasing with what? I, I don't expect any issues I got at all. Got you. So mm -hmm. I, don't think, I don't think there's a, an issue with looking at them kind of in a. Simultaneous. Yeah. And you'll have, okay. you'll have okay. Okay. Commissioner Carthen in the meeting with you, too. So okay. you can bring anything. From your committee into the purchasing oversight. Okay. okay. I just don't want to end up pushing it off. No, and then we would put it on the next agenda after the next. Work that's session. that's your plan, though. That is the plan. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, thank you. And uh, outside of that, I think the other stuff I can kind of take on a take on the background and we'll be fine. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I yield back. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Geiger. Yes. Thank you. Um, Terry, the miscellaneous equipment under Parks and Rec, <coughs> uh, how is that budgeted? Is it the $100,000 you've got up there for 2019? Uh -huh. uh, did we approve that? Is that broken out each year? or Because there's no specified amount to spend under equipment, is there? It's broken out each year. It's broken and then he brings the items to the so board individually. Because Parks and Rex is running short, and we're worried about some of our projects getting done, and there's been some overruns in the Parks and Rex, especially on the uh, the uh, well, the expanded scope of the work for the youth center, for instance. Um, could the miscellaneous equipment be put on hold until we get our funding for our projects? It could be. That's up to the board. <clears throat> because uh, that's something that maybe we could put in a BIR or something with Parks and Rec. Um, I think it's uh, the citizens would appreciate more the projects being done rather than just new vehicles to ride around in or, or things like that. I know a lot of it's lawnmowers and stuff like that. Too. And this, you have a special piece of equipment this time where the arm reached out. Well, that that was on the Miguel's section. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Gary's has been big. But it, it was just a, a thought. This is not <coughs> as much of a priority as our projects are. To, at least it's not to me. But there's not much under the right. equipment mm -hmm. left right. to either. Well, hundred thousand dollars. Well, it's just a thought because uh, it could uh, help with part of the uh, shortfall that we're seeing because of the overrun. So anyway, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, I go. You have something, Commissioner Parker? Yeah. 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 yeah, just put, put parts of rec and again, I'm always cautioning that when you hear conjecture and just commentary about you know, the boundary waters. 
citizen input was gathered to expand the scope, was it not? Yes. Uh, and so it wasn't a unilateral push <coughs> on the scope. Uh, I think public engagement was very, very important. Uh, and I think that's always critical along the way is to see what the citizens have to say. And was there sufficient input from the citizens to warrant an, an expansion? Uh, or to be, it wasn't even an expansion, it was a validation of use. Remember, we didn't sell them on citizens. We, you didn't sell them on a set of projects. You said them, we, we sold categories. And then there was a, a list of projects. Um, when we started this floss, and Mark, you remember this, the community center wasn't even on the list. Remember, Mark, we could get on the back side. This is important. So, as you, I, I'm real careful that, you know, again, it's because we're recording this for all history, that you need always both sides of the story, that it, it doesn't um, get leveled one way or the other. So, when citizens look at it, they can see the truth. Um, so, as citizens are giving input along the way on this project, and we're validating, okay, what is it that you thought you wanted in this community center? They weighed in. We recalibrate, and so the committee went through that process to calibrate. In other words, we don't want to deliver something like that's not what I wanted. So when we say that it was an overrun, <coughs> I think the citizen blessed this, unlike the aquatic center, that really was a scope blown. Two separate things. The scope was done, the design was done, and then they decided to expand it. <coughs> so it was like going into the design, let's make sure the elements of this is accurate. Right, so it's real subtle how we words are used to sort of smooth one thing versus like, well, that's not how that works. That's not project management. You got input from the citizens. They influenced the design versus design was done and we changed scope. Two separate things. Right, so I, I appreciate that uh, there's concern about projects downstream that may not get there, just like the soccer field, the football field, and everything else in 2002 that we're doing 20 years later. It's okay. But I, I wish, you know, back to the point of my, Ma Madam Chair's comments, move forward with the commentary, right? Come up with solutions, right? Versus complaining. This is something just, it gets old. Come, you know, sort of like the House versus the Senate. The House rules majority. The Senate does give you a chance in the minority, sort of, if you bring something to the table. But just, uh -huh. just I, okay. I, well, there's a way forward, but it's not my job to help you think through what this is. But it's like, you know, it, it gets old. It, it, it's not Douglas County. And you, you have to like, oh man, come on now. Move forward. Bring a solution to the table. To, you know, reach out to it. You, you gotta ask. You gotta work with somebody to get something done. You're not entitled to a, a resolution. Because at some point, the division becomes like, well, just let them be. You gotta do better. Right? So I, I hear you, but bring something to the table. And, and, and if there's a, a concern, if it, there's a working solution, but the commentary is not healthy with the county as a whole if you all love the county. If you really care about the county. Or if we go into the self preservation just me, then it's like, okay, well, let it be. I'm just, I'm, I'm just only bring this up because, you know, at some point you, 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 you have to get out of the, 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 the cycle of just, uh, it'll get worse before it gets better. And so it's like, well, you, each person can do their own. The guy mentioned earlier, like, well, we can start with just us, and let's begin to change the narrative. Uh, else, uh, it will be what it will be. Are you? Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Initially, <laughs> I was getting ready to move on, but no. Just one comment, please. Mm -hmm. There was a citizens committee that voted on the project. So <coughs> they even voted for that youth center to be on the western side of the county, but that was taken away. But everybody voted for their projects in their district too, but they also voted for the good of the county. So when you just let one district and the citizens in that one district take away the projects that the citizens committee voted on for the, all of the county, then you're not being fair <coughs> to have, to add not only, I 
think the scope of the work was changed from one basketball court to two basketball courts. Most gyms don't even have that. And then to have an elevator put in there, you expanded the scope 6,000 square feet because there was a wish list for one district citizens to pick from when the staff had recommended the square footage be 25,000 square feet, it was raised to 31,000 square feet. So <coughs> we went over the heads of the staff and the other people that was on the citizens committee that chose all the projects just to increase the scope of one building for one district. So that's what I'm talking about. And with that, I yield. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. This is good. This, so, I'm, please, please. We really have to move <laughs> Okay, I, I wanted to clarify. Yeah, you're right. Just one. All right. Okay. Yes. We'll, we'll be quick. Okay, because this, this is not a tennis match, y'all. Yeah, we need yeah, to move yeah, on. No, but we want to. No one's going to speak up now. I can't hear him. <coughs> this is our stage to hear. Um, if we're not trying to raise our voices. You know, this is amongst us. All right, so this is good. Remember, let's be honest. You know, we have you know, citizen groups that stack steering committees and try to over influence and bully and dominate and try to control. Right? So, our job is to make sure things are calibrated. Uh, the other input with, this, with the whole process is when we get input from citizens, we make the final decision. Now, remember, <coughs> District, you represent the district for it, and so one of the things was that you, you said we don't want parks and rec as a category. There was we no don't. senior. There was no, like you me. just said, there just was never me. any okay. mention of a community. Just, just easy. He has the floor right now. Just easy. Just easy. And so with, with that, no parks. We don't want no parks and rec. We don't want no categories. But these were things that were always out there, senior citizens, so forth. So I get, at the end of the day, I don't want to make this long, but it's like, well, you had two months. Because you could have locked some of this stuff up. Right? And it, it's an over-criticism. Like, well, this stuff is, could have been prioritized and been done. So we're, we're moving forward with the citizens' input along the way. And you know, and it, it's a working relationship, but at the end of the day, the, the, the end results are the end results. And so since it's been set, now you move forward. But keep, I'm like, okay, but it's not gonna change. It's like, but it's not gonna change. And so now you have to reconcile, like, well, wait a minute, you could have gotten some things in if there was really a concern for it. That's all I'm saying, it's like, don't make it about a certain district when you had a chance to weigh in and so it turned to be, if it's heavily weighted for whatever reason in one district, well, your voice wasn't heard. You were at the table. Stop, stop, let it go. Let it go. And well, just, just stop, don't, don't make it. We, this is the last thing I said. Quit, quit making it personal. This is what Commissioner Mulcair tried to in his last comments to me. It's, there's a way to talk, but when you begin to divide, Districts. We've never been in a place where we, we talk about dividing the districts. And, and, and like, you don't <coughs> want to do that. You can talk about product. It's real subtle. It's, it's, it's the propaganda. It's like, that's not healthy because it, it, it will respond back. It's like, is that what you want? It's like, it, it can isolate, like, no, it, it like, do better than that. And this little manager, like, no, don't divide the districts. Don't make it about that. Like, do a better job at advocating for your district to align it, but don't criticize because of this, like, okay, don't do that. Don't, like, you can do better. That's all I'm <coughs> saying is that it'll, it'll come back, like, stop with the narrative. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to move on, but uh, I would um, really like to see uh, you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, and uh, Commissioner uh, Guider, if y'all could just meet offline and discuss this because we will be beg begging to differ for uh, eternity, because I, was, I wasn't here when this took place, or should I say all the sequences. I just want you all to sit down and talk about it. But what I've been doing in the background is pressing for those two parks, which, and I had a conversation with Terry this morning, Fair Play and Bill Art, uh, simply 
all the districts, I mean, they're all, all four, and I want to make sure that they do uh, these parks get some consideration, and we talked about that. It looks good. We're just waiting on the deer lick information to come in. Is that correct? Yes, the yeah. numbers. And once those numbers come in, uh, Commissioner Guider and Commissioner Carthen, we'll have something for you. So I'm keeping my thumb on the pulse. I'm watching, but I don't, I'm keeping my emotions at bay because I want to be, you know, I always say, you know, you want to make sure that you, uh, make sure that you put your emotions away aside and then look at responsibility. And we've been keeping our eye on the sparrow, so I'm, I'm, I know it's going to look good. And I'm just faithful and optimistic. Sometimes I guess I'm too optimistic, but I believe it's going to be okay. So as soon as you have that information, I believe it'll be another, another couple of weeks so we can relieve mm -hmm. the should citizens of District 3 and 4. And, but, and what I don't want to do is, uh, again, I, I, I don't want us to become divided. We are one Douglas. And whether that uh, multi-purpose center sits in Iran is ours here in Douglas County. So everybody can use that uh, center. So it doesn't matter. And the senior centers, all, everybody from all over the county use these senior centers. So please, let's not divide our county. And I'm going to move on to the next. Do you have any more questions uh, or any more comments, Mr. Gable? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you have uh, something for us, uh, Director of Communications, for the SPAS? Not to stop on the vendor piece, but I will just speak a little bit to, to the communication to the citizens. Uh, every single time I go out to any location, I bring about what's going on as far as Douglas County projects. So if there's any time that people have any concerns, I always tell them that, you know, we start off with the percentages and we're doing well with that because every month, besides the first year, most months, we are always above our projection. Projection the first year was 1.9. We came in sometimes at 2, 2.1. I believe the highest we've had is 2.5. So I make sure that I actually tell the citizens what's going on. And if they give me feedback <coughs> and the information is incorrect, they give it back to me, I make sure that I still give them the right information. And if there's ever an email that's to be sent to anyone, I'll make sure that I also will share it with you guys. So therefore, you will have a, um, a baseline. So starting um, next month, I also will report a little bit on some citizen commentary I get throughout the uh, get you know get throughout the weeks, throughout the month, so you guys will know where we are when it comes to citizens communication. Now that we are almost finished with the radio tower, and a lot of the projects that the citizens are really concerned about you know, come on board, I'll make sure I get the information to you in detail. Okay. And that's it. Uh, are there any questions for me? Any questions for the board? Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. We're going to move on to tab number seven. We'll be moving directly into our business items. Um, thank you, Mr. Poor, for waiting Absolutely. patiently. Authorization to accept a grant from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the Felony Drug Court and the Mental Health Court, Hope Court, in the amount of $472,463,000 with the matching funds in the amount of $52,496 for the grant fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget as necessary. Mr. Tim Good morning, everyone. This is our uh, annual grant from CJCC. We apply for it every year. It's renewed every year. Every year we have seen an increase in this grant amount. Uh, we again see an increase in this grant from our amount awarded last year. I count that as a vote of confidence and how we have increased the size and scope of court. Uh, so for us this is very good news, especially with news coming from the state for Governor Kemp asking for budget cuts. Uh, so as state agencies are cutting, we are seeing additional funds brought to Douglas County. So for me, it's all good news, but I'm here to answer any questions. Okay, any questions from the board? Commissioner Carthen. I have a question regarding the Physical Year 19 Budget Detail Worksheet. Is this what your office puts together in order to <coughs> go after the grant? Is this what you send to the, to the state to, to get the grant money? It's what they send back. It's what they send back. Um, some of that information is taken off the application that we send in. Mm -hmm. Our application is sometimes 19 or 27 pages. Uh, so it's a little larger than that, but this is what they come back with. And that's why some of the line items that you see on there have zero dollar amounts on there. Mm -hmm. Because that's the state basically saying, nice try. Okay. Uh, not this year. Okay. <laughs> or our priorities are something else, whichever way you feel like. 
I'm taking that information. That's good to know. That was it. I just wondered how, how you came up with that and why some of them was zero. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Good to know how you. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Good news. We'll move on to tab number eight, authorization to award the bid for the carpet replacement of the Woody Fife Center mm -hmm. to Franklin Builders for a total cost of $20,993.70 <coughs> as recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee and amend the budget. This Good morning, everybody. Great morning from the seniors of Douglas County. So, uh, yes, we submitted four bids this time. They went through the Purchasing Oversight Committee and the one that was the lowest bid is um, the twenty thousand. I'm sorry, twenty thousand nine hundred ninety-three dollars and seventy cents, and that's Franklin Builders. So we would like to get moving on this. The painting has been completed, and so we really like to get this done. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. <coughs> We'll move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve a maintenance agreement with Doron uh, Precision Systems Incorporation for a driving simulation system in the amount of $9,975 for the period of August 1st, 2019 through um, July 31st, 2020, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Um, Major Holmes. This is the uh, renewal for the maintenance agreement. I want to understand it's the same as last year. And that's for the driving simulators we use for the care program for the team driving. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Very good. We'll move on to tab number 10, authorization to purchase 12 trash receptacles for the park system at a cost of $9,244.36 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds allocated for equipment as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dupes. Yes, ma'am. These are our trash uh, receptacles that will be used throughout the park system. And uh, it comes as a recommendation from the Recreation Oversight Committee, as you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the board? Sounds pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, part of beautification, so thank you so much, uh, Parks and Recreation Committee. Tab number 11, authorization to purchase uh, no two fax software computer program as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee, recommendation, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Chiefs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this software will allow our ambulances, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, fax their patient care reports to the hospital, which is required by law. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're using a, a hybrid system that uh, our own IT department has helped us kind of build, but it's not reliable and we need something that is reliable so we can get these reports turned in as the state requires us to. Uh, and this was a recommendation from the Fire and EMS Committee. Okay, any questions? Vice Chairman Robinson. So when you say um, it was unreliable, are, is it the, 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 the transmission fails? Um, I mean, you say it's a requirement. What, what does that mean? Are, how do we feel? If it fails, what do we do to, to remedy it? Was there? Uh, <clears throat> the uh, let me address the first part first. Okay. The, the unreliability. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a like several different programs were put together in order to allow our computers to fax. Uh, so if any one software program fails, then we don't get to fax. Uh, so there's there's multiple problems in that, uh, and so that that's why we're we want to go with this. We had actually brought this before the uh, fire and EMS committee uh, before uh, with the the contract, and uh, unbeknownst to us, they were actually going to charge us a per page fax fee. So we went back to the. Uh, to the company and talk to them about that, and they've eliminated that. So uh, our total cost is uh, forty-seven hundred and fifty dollars for this, uh, which includes setting it up in all the hospitals we transport to. Uh, uh, as far as what the state requires, uh, within 
uh, 24 hours of us delivering a patient to the hospital, we're supposed to give them a patient care report. Right. So <coughs> if we can't fax it to them, then we actually have to print one out and take it back to them. Okay. So we, we, we've, been able, we've been able to do that then, because I'm meaning... We have. Uh, sometimes with this fax program that we're using now, uh, we repeatedly try to fax to them, and they don't get anything, and then they get five faxes of mm -hmm. the same patient. So I get it. That, that, that's trying to get to the unreliability part, and, right. and just and, and again, it's, it's, it's you know, we, we all want to. Douglas County wants to do its part and make sure we fulfill state requirements. I'm always asking, especially Director Hall, and I want to be unqualified. Is there something happening? So there's no penalty for it not <coughs> getting there. It's a requirement, but what I'm saying is, sounds like we made a best effort. Um, to get the information to them, it wasn't successful, and then we, we come back afterwards. I mean, what is it? it it's a requirement by the uh, uh, Department of Health that we do that. Uh, we've got 24 hours to do it. Right. Uh, right. And let's see. Uh, yeah, state law requires EMS providers to transfer all patients medical records created during an EMS call to the receiving facility within 24 hours of delivering mm -hmm. that patient to the receiving facility. So <coughs> that's the state law that we're trying to make sure we do. Okay. Uh, and this fax program is the simplest way to do that. Okay. And, and I'm going to give Chief, I tried to reach for you early on. We have schedules got off, but I'll double back with the county administrator. And I'll just take the rest of my questions offline, aren't you? Okay. Yep. Thank you so much. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, yes. So are we still faxing, faxing? <laughs> Who's doing right now? You're not scanning, then fax? Or? No, it, it's, it's truly a fax. Uh, and that's what the, the hospital actually want. So. And I, I guess I'm really trying to say on your end, is this software that you're trying to get you now, is it, is it, would you scan, then fax on over, or is it more or less a no. true? We can, we can call, no, we've got a uh, mobile hotspot in our ambulances, so okay. that's how it's transferred. Mm -hmm. um, this is just to get the program that will actually do the transfer for us. That's your fax. But it's sent in a fax format, so yes, because it has personal information on those right. documents, yes. right. so you can't, yeah, so you can't, it's harder to get than email. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Rachel. All right, Chief, we'll move on to the next item. Um, it's uh, tab number 12, mm -hmm. authorization to award the bid for Pierce Manufacturing for the purchase of a pumper truck and additional equipment not to exceed the amount of $550,000 in SPLOS funds as recommended by the Fire and EMS, EMS Committee and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Chief Spencer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, on uh, July 26th, uh, the bids were turned in uh, for uh, this pumper truck. Uh, there were actually uh, five bids turned in. Uh, the lowest bid, uh, which was Fireline Inc., did not meet our specifications. Uh, they did turn in an alternate bid. Uh, but the lowest uh, bid that met our specifications was 10 8 fire equipment. Okay. Uh, we had a committee of our uh, fleet manager and our deputy fire chief look over all the bids, compare, make sure that uh, we were getting what we wanted. Uh, and uh, so we recommend <coughs> approval to 10 8 fire equipment. Okay. Any questions from the board? Chief, where is this pumper truck coming from? Is it coming from another state like the last uh, state? Appleton, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. So. Right. Any questions from the yeah. Vice Chairman Robinson? Yeah, so again, Chief, just um, <coughs> I know at some point in the not soon future, there will be an additional fire station um, <coughs> on down line. I'm not even suggesting it, but I'm, I'm talking about when we acquire new assets, how does it how do you rotate them around? How do you, I mean, what goes where? How do you handle it? I mean, I, I've talked to Sheriff about what they do over there regarding equipment and stuff, but I was just curious, how does it work here? Well, actually, we've got busy fire stations 
Yep. And we got really busy fire stations. Yeah. So what we try to do is rotate from the really busy fire stations into the slower stations. Uh, so we'll, we'll put a new truck in one of our busiest stations for a year or so, and then we'll rotate it to one of our slower stations. And then the truck that was in one of the slower stations will move to reserve status. Mm -hmm. So that when, when the other trucks are being serviced or whatever, we can put it you know, in service. All right. So right now, how many fire stations do we have up? We've got uh, 10 fire stations. 10 fire stations, and uh, equipment-wise, uh, how many fire trucks, how many ambulances, total fleet? Uh, total, we've got uh, uh, roughly 30 emergency vehicles. Uh, that includes staff vehicles, uh, ambulances, engines, uh, our squad, yeah. <coughs> truck, right. uh, any of the special vehicles we have. And that allows us to respond to roughly 100, 30, 40, 50,000 people strong within a 199 square mile area. Yeah, and last year we ran roughly 18,000 calls. Mm -hmm. That's so. what I was getting to. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner yes. uh, Mitchell. And, and I apologize. I need to go back to item 11. That 4750. Yes, is that is that one time or is it annually and then what's the, the maintenance the, the 4750 mm -hmm. uh will be a one-time fee mm -hmm. and then the annual maintenance will be a total of 1950 mm -hmm. a year 1950 yes sir. okay so that's the maintenance fee to keep the software mm -hmm. up to updated and all that kind of Yes, sir. And we automatically get the updates and all that good stuff if it right. how it hired it falls or whatever. Yes, sir. And are we staying close to the technology committee to assure that the bandwidth and all that kind of good stuff that goes along with that, that we are... We have discussed this with uh, Director Martin. Yes. Uh, and he's, in, he's on board mm -hmm. with it. Okay, okay. So he's mm -hmm. definitely in the loop, so we won't... Yes, sir. You know, don't want to have you out there on the island by yourself. Right. You know, and... No, no, no. He's 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 on board with it, and and kudos to our IT department because you know the, they fixed us a, a solution that we've tried for a couple of years now. You know mm -hmm. to make work. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know I appreciate them trying to trying to help us out the way they have. But I think this is going to be our best. Okay. 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 Good stuff. All right. All right. I do that, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions for the chief? All right, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to tab number 13, authorization to award a contract to the NICE companies for the design and construction of gateway <coughs> signage in Douglas County for a total cost not to exceed $140,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. This is a recommendation from the Purchasing Oversight Committee. We went out for bid um, uh, in April, April 30th of this year. The due date was May 10th. We had two bids received uh, from Signal Signs and, and the Nice Signs, the Nice Companies. Uh, we invited the two companies in on June the 15th to make oral presentations. And based on the submitted bids and oral presentations, we're recommending that through the Purchasing Oversight Committee that the award be made to the Nice. This, this is for uh, signage that would be placed uh, eastbound at Liberty Road and then westbound at Thornton Road, welcoming uh, I 20 citizens into the camp. Okay, any questions from the board? Commissioner Mitchell? So, do we have a mock up of what that would look like or kind of? We do. Uh, both firms submitted drawings. Okay. Uh, some wood break. Uh, it's it's going to be a very modern design, something very sleek, and uh, we, we, we looked at very tall towers versus the shorter. Uh, so this is tall? This is short? It, this is going to be one of the shorter ones. Okay. It's not going to be like the third Prior to installing these, we'll get, yeah, we'll have actual mock-ups. Y'all get a chance to look at it. Yeah, they come right. Right now, it was just things being mm -hmm. submitted. Well, here's some ideas. Here's some concepts. Got it. So nothing's been decided. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm. But we will bring it to the board for approval. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But the committee, I guess, will, will kind of make the, give us a recommendation of whatever that may or may not, or may be. 
Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. no, okay. But yeah, but we, we, we will make sure that we get all the designs right. out to you guys because one of the things that we want to do is make sure that our upkeep of it won't be a hindrance right. as well. And that was so. going to be my next part right. that, you know, yeah. whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know, how we keep it up if it's going to have plants and water and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole lot of other stuff that could come along with it, though. So. Yeah, right. well, the landscape plan, plan is separate, but we will, both you. projects are going to be think along, Right, you got to mm -hmm. think along that line with, with that because yes. you're not. In, could have a nice piece of artwork, but <laughs> looks so kind of uh, right. Big so weeds. Yeah, 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 we're working with them. Okay, okay. Oh, all right. What's that? All right. I yield back. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. All right. I believe we'll move on to the next uh, item, which is tab number 14. Last but not least, um, authorization to award the bid for the asphalt materials to C.W. Matthews Baldwin Pay Paving and E.R. Snell contract Contractor for the period from August 1st, 2019. To December 31st, 2019. Uh, Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Every six months, uh, we go back out for bids on asphalt because the price is a little volatile. Uh, this is standard process for us. Uh, so we're asking, we, we went out for bid. We had the three companies that don't always bid give us their unit prices. And this allows us to choose based on location of the work to be done, allows us to choose which plant. Uh, we can get the product from at the cheapest cost as well as the cheapest transport to get it back to the site. Mm -hmm. So uh, this would be for the six month period from August 1st through December 31st. Uh, and this will enable uh, the DOT operations to continue doing their paving <coughs> that's underway. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? Yes, question? Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, <coughs> these are in-house, this asphalt is from in-house projects, right? Yes, sir. All right. And so every six months, so what happens if our current unit price is less than what they're coming in on? Can I just extend the existing contracts to the guys in play? In other words, I want to go out here and see who's out here and can you beat what I can mean, How does that work? Uh, I know, sir, they will not extend past six months. They won't. It's where it expires. Wants. It dies. It dies. So we don't price. have it. We don't we not write a first refusal or. Okay. I was just asking. Yeah, we're good. I got it. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other uh, discussion to come before? Oh, right Any? Yes, okay. Any other miscellaneous discussion? Okay. All right. Then what I'll do, uh, Attorney Bernard, um, sounds like we have a gift of time. Do we need to, uh, to go into a good session? Yeah, we do for uh, real estate and legal and personnel, Madam Chair, but it uh, should be fair and quick. Mm -hmm. I did one. Oh. Yeah, before you do Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You got one minute. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that um, the, the third annual HOA boot camp that occurred this weekend at Deerlick Park was just a phenomenal success. All districts were represented, um, very cross section of group of people. Um, Director um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, thank you so much for her effort for getting this done. Had some great guest speakers, um, did a great job on parliamentary rules, um, things that really matter to the citizens. And the reason I say this is that they were engaged. I mean, and, and again, it was one of those that were engaged with each other. Um, a lot of um, celebration about as far as what the information they got out of this. Uh, we highlighted um, Ort Curry. He's the president of uh, Brookmont's um, HOA, and he came out and gave some information for them as well. James Worthington did a great job of giving us an update on pipe farms and so forth. So it was, it was, this one was like, this was special, it was a great one, Madam Chair. So I just want to thank the staff who came out and supported, also the citizens, and look forward to next year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mark, if you could just give an update uh, about, I know the mowing uh, company, I'm sure said that mm -hmm. our contractors are here. And they started on August 5th. Can you just for the public let them know that they're here and not also the two, what we're doing for Chapel Hill and Dorset sure. shows? They are here and they're working through their schedule. And then we sent four in house mowers, which is our crews Chapel Hill, Stewart's Mill, Dorset shows. Uh, we sent them this month. Okay, so they are out there working now. Yes, they should be. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll try it again. Board, you said we need to go into executive session, uh, Attorney Bernard. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Okay. Um, 
five on unanimous vote. The motion carries 10 minutes and we'll come back. Board of Commissioners, we had a very productive meeting today. Do we have anything else uh, to come before this final for discussion? Could I ask a question? Uh -huh. Yes. Do you know of any organization or department in our county that would want a kill and some molds and everything for, um, what do you call it? <laughs> ceramics. For the kill. For ceramics. Oh, yeah. I have somebody that wants to donate them. Uh, Don't know everything, but I didn't know if Parks and Rex did anything like that or whatever. Or maybe the Senior Center. Do they do? They have a lot of projects. Okay. They have projects. I don't know. We paint. Ceramics. Ceramics, and they have several modes and everything. I'll find that. Mark will find that. Okay. Thank okay. you. It sounds good. I used to. I used to do with ceramics. Okay. Anything else? With that being said, Board of Commissioners, this meeting is adjourned.